it's time for Refresh the Cash, the Dynamics 365 Portals podcast on the CRM Audio Network with your hosts, Microsoft MVPs, Nick Dolman, Colin Vermander, and Sean Tabor. This episode is brought to you by D365 User Group. D365 User Group is the world's most influential user group community of Microsoft Dynamics 365 and CRM users and partners. Across the globe, members share a common goal of maximizing and advancing the performance of Microsoft Dynamics 365 and CRM so that individuals and companies can improve operations, overcome obstacles, and exceed goals. All right. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. Wherever you folks are listening, this is the first Refresh the Cash episode for 2019. Um, I think we're on episode six or seven. I lost count. Colin, do you know where we're at? Up this to? is episode seven, I believe. That's pretty cool because I read somewhere that if a podcast can make seven episodes, it's going to stick around. So we've, oh, we've made it. We've made it. <laughs> And we have a lot of stuff to talk about today. So as we're recording this, um, as this morning, the the Dynamics 365 April 2019 release notes were officially released to the public. Um, the MVPs got a little bit of a sneak peek uh, last week. Um, so, of course, we've been, you know, every night before we go to bed, we've been reading through all the cool stuff that's coming. And what's really cool is when we're looking at the release notes, um, we have, there's a, a Dynamics 365 portal. So there's stuff coming from the portals and there's a couple of really cool features, some small stuff. And I think a, a kind of a, a big one. And then there's a few other, if you kind of look through the release notes, there's a few other things that have kind of popped up that uh, Colin has kind of noticed as well. So we'll chat about that. So um, first thing, uh, let's just maybe take a quick look at the, the release notes here. Um, I think what's really interesting, firstly, in the release notes is that the portal is actually called out um, at the very top level of the, the release notes kind of hierarchy. It's no longer under customer service. It's actually kind of its own type of product and everything now or line. And I think that's result is uh, them restructuring the portal team now as part of the platform. Yeah, and that's uh, and that's really cool. Like we we heard that news earlier on that that team's now kind of moved up to under Charles Lamana and his group, and one of the other MVPs, Neil Benson, kind of called it out. He said, "It's nice to see that Portals has a seat at the big boys' table now, or at the adults' table." Yeah. Um. So I, I think in terms of doing any kind of portal work for the Dynamics, it's kind of it's no longer a a check mark on a marketing list saying, "Yeah, we have Portals," or just extending some of what we would call those first party apps. It's like, you know, we actually, this is a key part of the, of the power platform kind of going forward. So I think I kind of think this is kind of the tip of the iceberg. I think we're going to see a lot more neat stuff coming probably in the fall into next year. So we should yeah, kind of, I think this is going to really enable that portal development or a product team there at Microsoft to kind of make the strides they've been wanting to make and not necessarily tied to an app and, it looks like the apps are now going to be similar to all of us partners or ISVs where they're kind of just implementing a, a platform feature, um, just like all of the other features, the dynamics. So um, this should hopefully really help progress the portal, both from the platform standpoint, I think, as well as the application, because the applications are now going to be responsible for their own portals and everything. So, yeah. And I think, you know what, I'm going to, I know there's a couple other features, but I'm actually going to jump to the last one on, not the last one on the list completely, but within the Dynamics 365 portal section, because that one piece really highlights this whole concept. The fact that and it's titled CDS Starter Portal. Yeah, that super really speaks to the platform, I think. Yeah, exactly. So if you were if you were to provision a portal today and in, I'd say in the past, you need you need the the first party apps installed. You need sales and service because there are dependencies in the portal, and that's just how that's how it evolved from the old ADX Studio days. That there's tie into the contacts, well, which is um, one of the core core CDS entities, but there's tie into the case entity and some of the other ones that are what has those dependencies on those first party apps. But now going forward, we're going to get what they call the CDS Starter Portal, which means you can build a, a new CDS application with without all of those 
other install. So actually, maybe it's just better if I even read it. Um, this feature brings in the ability to connect a portal to a CDS for apps environment that does not have any Dynamics 365 applications, sales, service, or marketing pre-installed. Yeah, I think Microsoft kind of calls this CDS naked, basically. There's no anything beyond the, the core CDM entities in there. So basically, you, you really have account and contact in the activity-based entities. So Yeah. And that's, and historically, if I look at a lot of the projects I've worked on, and I'm sure Colin, you're in the same boat, that we have projects we've worked on in the past that they never really use. They don't use cases. They don't use opportunities. But we built a lot of that, what we would call XRM functionality. Yeah. You know, I think we'd use accounts and contacts. Um, but that really is what the whole CDS for apps is. And it's building those, you know, those traditionally what, you know, what is called now model-driven apps. But we were building like forms and views for custom applications for I think years. Yeah, I think a lot of in project implementations I do the the large majority of the custom development you're doing or you're being contracted to do is is related to extending it beyond those standard out of the box features. So it's always going to contain a lot of uh, potential for custom business data and custom entities because that's what consulting and technology partners are, are probably the best at doing for dynamics is extending it beyond what those starter apps provide. So it makes yeah, sense. And then the fact, you know, we, and of course we're already, we already know we can do like the canvas based power apps into that mix and, yeah. and we're beginning to, and, you know, Colin, you did a pretty great presentation at extreme on how, you know, surfacing a canvas app within a model driven app form, and it's like you know, peanut butter and jam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's great a feature. So <clears throat> I think what's going to be the most interesting about the CDS portals um, and, and like the huge benefit of CDS is partly the licensing. Um, you get a CDS for a lot cheaper than you do a Dynamics 365 application. So I'm very curious to see what they end up doing with the licensing around CDS portals. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think at some point there's still going to need to be an investment from like a customer, from a licensing standpoint into portals. But with the fact now, I know Dalip had mentioned that on the, the greater roadmap sandbox portals was in the mix. So we're not breaking NDA by saying that. Um, that's not highlighted in these release notes, or at least not in any of the portal sections that I read. So I think we're still, and I think part of the, the reasoning it's not in these release notes, because I think it was already mentioned somewhere in a roadmap or something like that. So we're still kind of waiting on what happens there. Yeah, they know the importance, I think, of that. So hopefully it'll be something that just gets worked in when, when they have it ready. Well, it's because we keep screaming at them every time. <laughs> and then yeah. every time they say it's not going to happen, we'll say, well, fine, we're just going to keep on screaming. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, cool. I think the CDS portals is super cool. It'd be very interesting to see how it gets used. Um, I'm definitely very excited to to have that there as an option, I think, both for, for clients as well as, as kind of ourselves and utilizing it in different ways. Absolutely. And I, yeah, it's just going to be, be interesting and, and looking forward to seeing how that all comes together for sure. Um, so just kind of going through from the top level, I know we jumped to CDS portals, but I think it's, a, I think to me, that's the, that was that's the most the, exciting for sure. Yeah. It's a big ticket item. I mean, the other stuff is cool too, like, uh, enhancements to portal diagnostics tool. Um, I know in the, in the ADX studio days, you're working on a portal project where if we got any kind of weird error messages on the screen or, um, any kind of oddities happening, I, I'm not sure what your process was, but I always just loaded up Visual Studio, ran the portal within Visual Studio, connected it to my Dynamics, and then went through the steps. And then usually there, I was pretty quickly able to find any kind of issues I was having because the breakpoints in the source code would actually highlight what kind of mistake I made. And usually they're pretty simple, like, yeah, you're missing a site setting, or usually it's data-related. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean... Back in the ADX days, we had an error notifier built into the portal, the trace viewer and everything. So we tried to automate a lot of our error collection from clients. And I'm guessing that's exactly what Microsoft does behind the scenes as well with, with their version of uh, the portal. Um, and they're probably using App Insights and, and they're probably seeing a lot of trends as a result of all of that as to what the common errors are. So 
I think they can pretty much put this enhanced portal diagnostics tool as a, a feature for every release because they're going to be constantly, hopefully, developing new scenarios that are, are the common errors people run into and, and being able to address them in a self-service manner rather than you having to call up support. You can just run the diagnostics tool and it'll tell you, hey, whoops, you deleted the home page or you did this and that and, and here are the steps how to fix it. So I think... I expect to see this constantly as an improvement out of them. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm just looking at the notes now and they say the feature enhancements will allow users to identify incorrectly configured site markers. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've been there, done that. Yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> identify performance impacting entity permissions and slow running queries. So that's an interesting one because that ties into a little bit to our last episode with Nikita about, you know, performance and things like that. Now, again, I think a lot of performance issues always relate back to the the application side or the, the Dynamics 365 side, what's going on there. But to have the ability to kind of identify that on the portal side, I think is I think that could be pretty helpful. Yeah, I, I can't stress, like, slow learning queries are, are probably the largest running problem um, that I've seen in a lot of portal um, diagnostic type tests or when we've been brought in to, to kind of resolve performance types issues. Um, you make a weird join or you go and get all entity attributes, um, you have a huge chance for for creating a very poor running SQL query in the background, which will result in, in really poor performance. So um, it should be really the, interesting to see the what they have there. Yeah, because those types of things I found, they surface on the dynamics, like on the 365 side as well. Like if you have a million contacts in the database and yeah. <laughs> you're trying to query on something on the portal side, well, if it's slow on the CRM side, it's going to be worse on the portal side. Yeah, and remember, I mean, you can call up and add, have them add indexes, so you can file a support request and ask them to add a SQL index, and um, that will greatly improve your your query time as a result of having an index on that table. So, yeah, definitely look into that type of thing if you feel like you have a, a valid query that uh, can be improved. And then the other point they talk about identify portal solution installation and update failures and suggestions. So mm -hmm. I find like that kind of suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> I think the suggestions would be open a ticket. Cause I think a lot of times <laughs> I've seen issues like the solution installing. I mean, that's a little bit out of our hands in the online environment um, because we don't install zip files, you know, directly anymore for like portal solutions. You do it through the administration. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if that fails, you're kind of, you're a little bit stuck. So it'd be interesting to see what exactly that, that comes out to as if it, there's a little bit more insight, you know. I think that's what it'll be. I mean, right now you basically are looking at the, the package deployer level. And you don't know which solution has failed or which data is causing an issue or which dependency in the solutions is perhaps a problem. So perhaps they're just going to give you access to that package deployer uh, type logging in more, a more friendly manner. So um, that would be a definite value. I don't think I see this actually run into too much of, of issues in their upgrade process. So um, it's been pretty, pretty solid. Um, there has been the occasional thing, but it's been pretty easy yeah. to resolve. So yeah, I've, lately I haven't had too many issues. Yeah. Um, so going on to the next one. So this this one is one that Colin you put in on the idea site. So I just want to circle to that for two seconds. Um, if you're ever using Dynamics 365, whether it's portals or any other the power apps, and you think in your head, wouldn't it be cool if dot 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 or Microsoft should do this dot dot dot? Um, if you have that idea, go to ideas dot. I think I think it's ideas dot dynamics dot com, or it's it's pretty easy to find. And, you know, take a search and see if that idea is maybe already there. And there's, I think they're improving that process, but then put your idea in and then once your idea is in, if other folks thinks it's a good idea, they can upvote it, they can downvote it. And there's actually nothing stopping you from going to Twitter or LinkedIn or any of the other socials to say, Hey, I just put this idea in the idea site, please upvote it. So Basically, what Colin, you've done, you put, you said, hey, we should have a maintenance mode where customers can flip a switch and see a portal is under maintenance when you're doing maintenance or upgrades or things like that. 
it got a, uh, about a dozen votes or so, and it looks like they, they took it and they implemented it or going to implement it. And they actually referred back to that idea in the release notes. <laughs> yeah, actually, I think this idea came out of one of uh, the Adoxio team members. I just happened to be the one that posted on the idea site. So we often collect um, through all of our developers and other uh, mem team members some feedback for the portal and, and what can be improved. So I sometimes will post that. Um, otherwise, my team doesn't always have the time to bubble it up on there. Um, but this one, I, th you know, they probably had this on their backlog already. It's just a convenience <laughs> that the two ideas kind of coincided. Um, but they do pay attention to it, and it is uh, something that's used very often. And I think this one's great. I mean, you're you're doing a production deployment. You want people to see half deployed data or get weird error messages while you're upgrading solutions. So. I think all CMS based systems have this type of option. So it was, it was yep. definitely a necessity for the portals to have and just allows for a much you know, more professional and, and cleaner user experience as with the portal for your client and the clients uh, users of that portal. So, yeah. And I'm guessing it's going to be probably something through the admin center, like it'd be a, like a nice little button or switch. Like I know in the past we've, you know, doing maintenance on, you know, large kind of portal projects where, I mean, they're on-prem portals. Uh, we'd have to, you know, get the, you know, set a redirect on the IP address and do some DNS magic. And then, of course, once you've turned all that stuff on, once your maintenance done, you got to backtrack. And if someone forgets a step along the way and then they realize, oh, something's wrong with the portal still, um, this way it's kind of nice. I'm guessing it would be probably a very quick enable and disable. Oh, yeah, even, they actually even say here. Enable and disable maintenance mode from the portal admin center. Yeah, and a custom error message, so you can yeah. say what you want in that in that type of maintenance mode. So and describe yeah. to your users when it's going to be up and when it's going to be turned off, type of thing. So which is right. kind of all standard as to what you would expect. Yeah, unless you're booking airline tickets during a snowstorm, but <laughs> then then you just get the sorry. <laughs> yeah. Never happens in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> For those of you who are in warmer climates, uh, Colin and I today, we were experiencing, was it minus 24 outside with minus 40 Celsius with the wind chill? Yeah, I think uh, my car wouldn't start last night, so um, fun times. I'm not even going to bother trying today. So yeah, well, my, tr my truck didn't even, well, it started this morning and I had an appointment and then it didn't start after the appointment and I had to get my wife come out and boost me. So. Oh no. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> So <laughs> continuing on, that's first world problems. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> Good excuse to stay inside today. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. So we got the next one, displaying external data in portals. Yeah. Um, and this is where, um, you know, they, they talk about the business value, about, you know, getting portal customers to be able to get data from external applications and displayed in portals in a secure manner. A feature allow customers to make client side calls to external APIs and secure them using OAuth implicit grant type flow. So this sounds very familiar to that open source project that you that you kind of manage. Yeah, I think like the companion app model is basically a a side application where you can actually go and touch the source code. I think the big change from ADX Studio to Microsoft was this whole, ADX Studio delivered this code base called Master Portal and you could go write your own C Sharp and custom logic and integrate with whatever the heck you wanted or .NET allowed. Um, but when the Master Portal code was no longer shipped from Microsoft uh, because they changed it to a SaaS product, people didn't have a way to write custom code like they were so used to. So. Um, I think you've done it in terms of doing the companion app for a payment type of gateway. Yeah. Um, I kind of took that companion app model and added authentication on top of it. Um, that authentication that I have in the open source version is done with B2C's um, secure token service. And that basically uses what they're talking about here is the OAuth implicit grant flow. Um, I think they're going to be providing their own STS actually in the portal. So you won't necessarily have to use B2C. So this should take the open source project I have and perhaps make it a little bit more approachable um, for other ones out there because the open source project that I have with, with B2C is, is actually quite complex to set up and manage. So it takes a fair amount of uh, authentication knowledge to understand all the, the moving pieces. Um, 
getting rid of V to C or not getting rid of it, but um, changing it so that's the portal's endpoints instead of a B to C one kind of takes um, a moving part out of the flow, which makes it a little bit simpler to approach. Um, I think they're actually going to be using the uh, portal STS, and I'm not entirely certain um, that's used with Cafe X. So if you're oh, okay. familiar with Cafe X, it's the chat that uh, is added into the portal. And if you notice, when you go and set up the Cafe X uh, chat, they give you some weird endpoints. And there's actually a way in the portal administration center to view what they call the, the public key. Um, and that public key is actually the key to uh, decrypt the STS's uh, tokens that it provides. So the JSON web token that it provides it allows you to look at that JSON web token and actually see uh, the payload that's within it. And that payload actually contains a contact ID. Um, the way that Cafe X does it is not in a completely OAuth um, manner. It's a little custom right now. Um, the open source project actually that I manage, and maybe we'll put a link in the, the show notes, I've actually done a branch that works off of the Cafe X model, but I haven't um, really advertised that that exists at this point. But with them probably doing this at this point, um, they're going to make it more standard of a feature. So it'll be much more approachable and probably configurable as well as documented directly by Microsoft. So yeah. um, I'm expecting that they're going to kind of enhance that Cafe X end endpoint and make it a standard OAuth type of endpoint, um, which will allow people to integrate using that implicit grant flow um, quite easily instead of the B2C way, which is a little bit, it's the same way, but it's just more more complex to implement as part of all that so yeah that's that's gonna be cool because that's gonna get, again kind of remove some of those developer objections about you know the the portals being online that you can't yeah. do i mean the things. big thing was you can't do sharepoint and that's why we kind of came up with the model is we wanted we needed to build sharepoint um for the Dynamics 365 portals and this was the way to allow secure user access to SharePoint. We wrote a custom application that accessed SharePoint's SDK and allowed us to surface SharePoint documents in the portal. So now you can do it with whatever and, and it'll be documented from Microsoft. So that'll be great. Yeah, awesome stuff. All right, next one we got on the list is Power BI Embedded. Um, so here, I think it looks just like they're just tweaking some of how that works with the the security access. And I thought they could do this before, but I guess I misread or made some assumptions. Um, so it's the ability to surface Power BI reports and dashboards to Portal's users who don't have a Power BI account. Yeah. I think basically here they're just using a service account for Power yeah. BI now at this point. Um, yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. Because I think before when I played around with it, then it was, yeah, okay. Yeah, that don't make sense. I, I, that's the only way it makes sense. Otherwise, they're basically just using the Power BI embed, um, the public-facing one where it's just iframing in. But I think this must just be a service account is my suspicion, but I don't think yeah. we know exactly at this point. Yeah, we just have the release notes. We don't have the code yet, but once we dig into it, then we'll, we'll report yeah. back here for sure. Yeah, Hopefully that gets... I'm just going to check here, but I think that's coming preview April 2019, so... Um, same with the starter, the CDS starter portal. Those will only be preview, not general availability. Yeah. Um, but time flies pretty quick. So yeah, cool. All right. So we, we already talked about the CDS starter portal. I mean, like I said, this is, this to me is, is the big ticket item. Um, this is exciting stuff because from a couple of reasons, you know, we chatted about earlier with the technology, about how it works, but also from a, direction of Microsoft and where they're going to power platform. Basically, I think they're saying portals is an important part of the power platform and by creating this as a, as a feature or a product, this sort of proves that to me. Yeah. I mean, portal is the external non employee facing mechanism to CDS and they're just stating that by having an option now directly with CDS and not necessarily needing an app. So, um, this will be huge, I think, for uh, the abilities that it provides at the ground level of the platform, um, not just yeah. at an application, but right there at the ground level. So I can't think of the number of clients where they've just been a glorified Rolodex with a custom, uh, a bunch of custom entities on top of yeah. that. So um, 
this is quite interesting as as it, we continue to move on to have that ability to build at the platform level for your internal employees, but now also your external facing scenarios or audiences as well. Yeah, no, that's gonna be pretty powerful stuff. So um, going also through the release notes and that's just, that's the portal section itself. And like I said, it's its own section out of probably about a dozen different ones. So um, definitely pretty cool that it's high. And I'm, I'm not sure if they're done in any kind of order, but it's higher than power apps and flow, <laughs> <laughs> but it's below it's the artificial... last D6, D365 one though. So <laughs> that's, oh, that's true. Okay. <laughs> It's on the list, though. That's it's on the list. It's on the list. It's out there. Yeah. If, uh, if this was a Gus Gonzalez episode, it, it'd be in the top 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, but the other interesting things looking at portals uh, under Dynamics 365 for marketing, and I think our, potentially our next episode, we're going to talk about marketing portal because that goes on a little bit of a different tangent than the regular portals. Um, so if you actually, if you're looking at the release notes, you'll see that there's integration with content management systems. Yeah, this is an interesting one. <laughs> yeah, and there's not a ton of information here. Now, I think Colin and I, we've, we both, like I've taken a very high level glance at the marketing portal. Now the marketing portal effectively, like if we were talking about this, like I don't know, six months or a year ago or actually no, it'd be less than a year ago because marketing didn't really go live until the spring of last year. Mm -hmm. But the portal that was there for the event management was just another, basically a custom portal that was configured with, you know, the entity list, entity forms and all that specifically for marketing and events and things like that. Now, and I know that they had some code in there. They were doing that plugin hack. They um, are. Yeah. A little weird. So they, they kind of went on a little bit off script that, potentially we as you know as implementers or isvs could potentially get our fingers slapped for but um one big happy family but now this they've in the last kind of update of marketing they've kind of gone in a completely different direction where they've effectively i'm just going to say like they've made their own portal technology in yeah. a sense where you can still use some of the existing portal stuff or you can kind of not use the portal at all yeah. and use this um i think it's an angular based javascript portal yeah, yeah and they've open sourced it which is pretty cool um i think what you're seeing here is basically that separation of the core portal team as part of the platform and, and now you have a basically a partner as a dynamics 365 app now it's a first party partner but um they're implementing the portal and, and running into some things they want to accomplish and, and seeing that the platform doesn't necessarily support it as a nice configurable mechanism, but d can enable it in other ways through uh, some sort of custom code type of scenario. Um, I think this marketing thing is quite similar to that um, display external data almost. Um, yeah. They, they are very similar architectures in the background of how they do the authentication and everything. Now it's not exactly the same, but it's the same kind of concept is they're providing this option for you to host a portion of uh, some of the portals functionality as its own code. So kind of in that companion separated from the portal sort of way. So um, I mean, we've taken a look at that open source project. I think briefly it is, like you said, it's an angular project with just a bunch of JS files and some example type of stuff. It's, there's not a huge amount of depth to it at this point. Um, but it is a way to kind of extend that as well in different ways. So very interested to see where this, this integration with content marketing or management systems goes, because this is hugely desired by uh, people even outside of marketing. Um, oh, for, for sure. Like there's, you know, this question came up even recently. It's like, well, do we, you know, you know, if I'm, you know, I'm working with a client, they're using WordPress. Mm-hmm. And it's like they already have a pretty involved WordPress mem member management system that's been built in use. And do they like, well, you know, what do we do? We actually, you know, integrate portals with that, or do we look at some, you know, third-party products that integrate WordPress to Dynamics or something else? And I think this sort of this sounds like marketing is kind of going in that direction where they can provide something that may be more integratable into other systems. Um, 
I know one of the other MVPs, Mike Ox, demonstrated, I think two years ago, was a product he was working on. I'm not sure if it ever saw the light of day, but it was more of a, not so much of a portal for Dynamics, but sort of a library or something that could be integrated into other content management systems. Um, yeah, so- I mean, yeah, you don't already have a port- Dynamics portal. You probably have some sort of other CMS that you're using to to communicate with a, your external public audience. So, um and it's yeah, it's like I said, it's not just marketing. Like you run into any type of sales organization or partner organization mm-hmm. using those sales features, and they already have a corporate CMS that they're using. How do I get my Dynamics data in there? So yeah, this will be. It does. It doesn't make sense to build a side portal, or or if you know, again, if it's just if you're just surfacing some of the data, do you really you know, baby building a portal is overkill. Yes. Well, and I think you have to also have to look at what your CMS um, requirements are as well. I mean, the portal, yes, it is a CMS, but is it as powerful, as comprehensive as a, a WordPress or a Sitecore or something like that? So, yeah. Um, so yeah, there's definite need and, and desire for this combining the portal's functionality, um, that bread and butter being like the access of Dynamics and CDS data. Um, with all of the the cool features of other applications out there, so yeah, no, and I think at the end of the day, it just it goes back to something I always says: the right tool for the right job. Mm, yeah, and the different businesses have different requirements, and I've even, you know, I've seen other uh, other customers who are using, uh, for instance, I've run into customers that are very heavy using Sitefinity as their CMS, yeah. well, and they start asking the- questions. About- about portals and i said don't you <laughs> you know if you're using sitefinity if you're happy with it and depending on your requirements portal connector yeah, quite look easily. at the the portal uh yeah the portal hero portal connector, our, our friend steve webb who i'm sure is an avid listener to this podcast <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah that's pretty interesting and then um there's something on I think the other two small the ones... Website personalization. Yeah, there's the enhanced event registration experience and the website personalization. I think those are those are two small enhancements that they're making. Yeah. So. And that's not to the, the core portals. That's, again, to the, the marketing little portal offshoot we were just talking about. Yeah. yeah. So. And then also, I'm kind of going through, it was in field service. Yeah. No, I thought this was a cool. You just showed me this literally ten minutes ago. So, um, yeah, the scheduling capabilities I think is where it's under. You have now yep. have the ability for self service scheduling via the portal. Um, yeah. Well, wow, it's awesome. Yeah, I've been asked for this too, and I've actually built stuff using. I think Microsoft had. Um, I'm trying to think the name of that. It's an Office 365 product where you can like schedule appointments, like if you're a, you know, a barber, or hair cutter, or something like that. Um. And I know that one of my customers asked me, hey, can we integrate that with Dynamics? And at the time, this is probably a year or two ago, and I remember trying to see if there was a flow connector. And there, <laughs> oddly enough, there wasn't. And But there was, there's another, there was another application, I think, called 10 to 8 or something like that. And it actually had its own flow connector. So I was able to actually set up a, a connection between that and Dynamics using flow. Um, still it was a little clunky, but it worked where they can go into this service, you know, schedule an appointment with somebody and do it through a portal and it would show up as an appointment in dynamics. Mm -hmm. So now this actually looks like it's like a feature out of the box with like field service. Yeah, it's, and I think, you know, ADX had this, but it was with the old scheduling engine. It was not with the field service based yeah. capabilities. So um, they're kind of upgrading. I mean, it's definitely not the the same entire UI. It looks like from the one screenshot they've got here, but um, they're taking what they had and kind of moving it onto the new modern platform. So and this is now. It'd be very interesting to see how configurable this is. Um, yeah, because I and... think every scenario we've done that's always different for every customer. So. And does this introduce a dependency on on field service? I'm guessing it does. Oh yeah, I'd absolutely say so. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So it's and like because I know there's the universal scheduling engine that you know that's sort of there as part of field service and project service, but you can still tie it to custom entities. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, definitely, definitely a cool thing. Um, so yeah, like there's a <laughs> like I said this. You know, I think the last few release, you know, starting with the last release notes in October of last year, but always anytime there's new releases coming or a new release, there wasn't 
uh, it wasn't a whole heck of a lot with portals. Um, portals seem to be a little bit on their own train for a while. Um, I think they still sort of, well, not, I wouldn't say they, they are, I mean, you still get feature updates, but I think that's the same across the board with everything. Yeah. Um, so it's, yeah, it's exciting to see that portals is actually pretty fair, pretty prominently here. And, um, and yeah, a lot of neat stuff coming and, and we know, you know, the conversation you had with Delip and some other conversations, there's still more cool stuff coming. Um, that yeah, we, I mean, we where's don't the cool know client API that he talked about? So <laughs> yeah, I didn't see that. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. We're gonna have to harass him in March a little bit to see where that's at because I think that's a, that's another game changer. Unless they're kind of they're sort of spacing them out to kind of give these drop these gems one yeah. step at a time. So it probably was just something that couldn't be guaranteed yet. At this point, they are working on a bunch of things. So I'm sure whatever makes it into this, these release notes is something they've, they've committed to and know they can hit. So yeah, um, hopefully over the summer, we'll see a next set of things and it'll be even more to the, the items that Dalip was talking about. And maybe we Perfect. can pry him and try to get him back on sometime soon. And maybe we can find out some more details as well from him and get his thoughts on these release notes at the same time. So, yeah, for sure. Oh, it's cool. Um, and yeah, I think we're pretty much at time today. Um, it was a good, good chat on the, on the, the, the new features and things like that. Um, definitely we got a, we got a, a lot of good feedback from our, our podcast, our last one with uh, Nikita, um, and portal performance and a lot of his experiences as well. So we'll try to definitely try to get Nikita back on at some point too. Cause I think he could, you know, I mean, he could probably talk for days on, on portals and everything as oh, well, but for sure. <laughs> yeah. And a few others as well. We'd like to get on, um, at some point and definitely delete, get him back on. And hopefully I can be part of that conversation at yeah, some no, time. Definitely. Um, so basically, uh, Colin, any, any big, uh, um, I would say our conferences or speaking events or things that you're going to be seeing your face publicly, uh, coming up. Uh, I think you were just, you were virtually in Dynamics 365 Saturday in London this past weekend, right? Yes, I was. I was giving uh, a session about the Power Apps, uh, Canvas Apps and Model Driven App Integration uh, this Saturday. So that was quite fun and had a really good turnout. I did it virtually from snowy Ottawa um, to London, uh, England. So uh, it was great. Glad to, glad to be there. Um, right now, I'm kind of looking at potentially uh, UG Focus in Houston and then perhaps uh, the European Extreme. I haven't really uh, confirmed either one yet at this point myself. So I don't know. What are you uh, planning next? I hear you're actually headed to the UK uh, this week. Um, so uh, after, Pretty much after in a couple hours, I'm actually on the way to the airport um, as long as my truck starts, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, delivering, I'm actually going to pop in at the, the Dynamics uh, UG meetup tomorrow night in Cambridge. Cool. Um, Neil Parkhurst is giving a talk on U, uh, Unified Service Desk, which, to be quite honest, I've never seen. So I'm looking forward to that because I think he Neil's a great speaker. And to be able to, I, I think that'd be a good kind of power up and just sort of make me a, give me a bit better understanding of what it does and what it can do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh, I'm teaching with another MVP. We're teaching a, a course on portals in uh, Stansted, UK, with Faradin uh, Kadir. So, oh, cool. Um, yeah, it should be. I think you know we have uh, you know some students there. Hope are eager to learn about portals. And um, and then on my way back, I'm actually going via Boston, going to the Dynamics 365 in Boston. Um, oh, world traveler. So, Jeez. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was hoping to get to Glasgow and just couldn't couldn't get the logistics to work properly because it looks like they got a pretty good lineup there as well. So um, for folks, definitely check out the Dynamics 365 Saturday site because I'm pretty certain there'll be one in your city at some point in the next few months or close by. And yeah, Raz and, was telling me about a couple of cool ones. I think Singapore is is a next one coming up in April or that's going to be pretty big. So wow, yeah. Should be cool. a lot of interesting ones, and it seems it's completely worldwide now. The, the Saturdays, yeah. so yeah, and we're planning one in Toronto. I think I can, I think I can safely say it's May tenth. It's going to be on a Friday. Yeah, and I think that's then, because we're having another one right after it, isn't that? Correct? Immediately, like less than twenty four hours later, in Montreal on the eleventh. On this, oh. that's going to be a Saturday. French and English. Wow. Yeah, it's going to, I think the one in Montreal, we're, we're kind of gunning to have a lot more French sessions. So I know we have people from all over the world and, and Quebec. Um, and a lot of the Microsoft events are always kind of in English. So 
you were, you know, trying to do something a little bit different working with uh, Salim there um, to get this to be a French speaking um, event. So I'll likely be there um, in support. I have to see if I can convince um, uh, the missus to see if she'll give a talk and, and basically maybe do some of my sessions, but in French. So <laughs> She's giving the <laughs> sessions for you in French? <laughs> yeah. Well, she, and then what, what's, what's, uh, what could be scary is she could probably do a way better job than I can, <laughs> and then no more speaking engagements for me. So. Uh-huh. Yeah. I see. I'd have to bring a translator. My French is terrible, so... <laughs> Oh, my, I, my French is, I, I wouldn't have no idea what they're talking about. So <laughs> she's going to be presenting. They're all going to be giggling. They're going to look at me and sleep laughing. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I am going to be there for that then. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, I look forward to it. So anyways, uh, Colin, uh, I think uh, if people want to kind of reach out to you on the socials, what's the best way? Uh, Twitter's probably the best. Um, you can find me at at Coolin, K-O-O-L-I-N, and then an underscore at the end, or on LinkedIn. So those are the, the best two places. Yep. Same with me. Find me on LinkedIn. Um, I think a lot of you people have been finding me pretty easily on LinkedIn, which is cool. And definitely on Twitter as well, at, at ReadyXRM. And uh, until next time, uh, have fun refreshing the cache. This has been Refresh the Cash, the Dynamics 365 Portals podcast from CRM Audio. Check out this and other podcasts at crm.audio. If you have any questions about portals for the team to answer, please send them to voice at crm.audio. You can subscribe to the CRM Audio network of podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, TuneIn, Spotify, or any place else to find podcasts are offered. This is a production of Dynamics Podcast, LLC.